Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here with today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this lovely pollarded willow tree bathed in moonlight. I'm beginning with a piece of Milford brand watercolour paper, 100% cotton. I've got it taped onto my board and I'm working from a quick sketch I did briefly earlier. Uh, I'll show you it right now. <laughs> you can see it's very basic, uh, but it, uh, it contains all the detail that I'm going to need for this painting. Uh, not all sketches need to be all singing, all dancing, complicated affairs. Sometimes it's good enough to just rough out the basics of uh, what you need and where. So I'm starting today by just washing over my paper with some uh, clean, fresh water and uh, try, <laughs> trying to um, chase a uh, stray bit of brush from my paper, which uh, as you can see went about as well as you'd expect. <laughs> uh, but yes, a nice wash of clean water and um, then just a minute to let it sink in to uh, give it a chance to soak in to that paper so that the, uh, the paint runs and spreads really nicely. And I'm using Prussian Blue to begin with today. You can see I am using a smaller brush. Uh, this is a, um, a Princeton Neptune square wash brush, three quarter inch size. I'm using it because I decided um, I wanted a little bit more control in this sky. So uh, a smaller brush can sometimes give you that. Um, you can see I'm blending in some Payne's Grey now. This is going to give us a lovely sort of mottled moonlit sky and you'll notice uh, up in that top left section I'm leaving a white space deliberately that's where I'm going to uh, pop in a lovely full moon um, which I haven't done with masking fluid or anything like that I'm just for now I'm just leaving an empty space uh, unpainted I'm just going to slowly draw the paint in around it uh, in a sort of um, a rough circle and hopefully it will end up looking uh, very sort of natural with a sort of soft diffused outline that speaks of a sort of gentle glow of moonlight. So you can see I'm using plenty of colour and plenty of water keeping my paper really nice and wet allowing that colour to flow and move around And I've got my paper um, at a slight angle. I've got my board at roughly 30 degrees. So um, it's not quite flat. It's just uh, letting that paint. You can see it's got a sort of gentle downward movement that you do get when, you're, uh, when your paper is tilted. Which uh, helps to make a really natural looking, soft looking sky. Now I'm just using a piece of clean tissue. I wrapped it around my finger and I'm using that to uh, just pull out, you can see, a little round moon just there. Or at least uh, almost rounder. <laughs> so I scrunched it up and I can just dab out the edges just using the tissue and that stops the paint from flooding into that area because that paper is now uh, drier in that area that I've just tapped with the tissue. Um, so that's going to be our lovely uh, full moon and I'm just using the uh, damp brush to move the paint around uh, around the outside of the moon hoping to keep a little bit of paler paper there and just get that, uh, that sense of a lovely glow of moonlight. So 
So now I'm going to introduce a little swipe of paint with a palette knife just for the foreground. Here we have some raw umber, a little Prussian blue and a little Payne's grey. I'm just spraying this lower right hand corner and I'm just going to swipe the paint across using the blade of the palette knife to just gently carry that quite thick uh, paint straight from the tube on that lower blade of the palette knife and I'm just going to begin pulling it across the lower part of this paper getting it on really nice and thick uh, and dark and you can see uh, where that paper is uh, still wet uh, it's already starting to move around and diffuse a little uh, on its own accord and giving this lovely sort of natural looking uh, semi-abstract sort of sense of a, uh, of a foreground. Just add in an extra little bit of water here and there, which you can always do to uh, just to help your paint begin to move around a little bit more if you want a bit more run uh, from your paint. A little bit more movement, you can always just give it a little quick spray, which just helps that paint to, uh, to start moving slightly. You can see I'm just beginning to, I'm just building up the uh, layers of this foreground and again just spraying over and just starting to get to uh, get a little bit more movement down in that right hand side and I'm just lifting and tipping the board slightly as well just to encourage that diffusion to start really running down the paper So just with a little bit of gentle encouragement, just encouraging the paint to uh, to run down from this from this spot here on the right. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is now I'm going to uh, leave it to dry. I'm going to leave it to dry propped upright so the uh, paint continues to run. And this is how it ended up looking. We've got a few lovely runs, a few lovely blooms of dark colour, that lovely abstract foreground. Uh, the uh, marks from the palette knife on the left hand side there is where I scratched into the paper with the blade of the palette knife and I think it's ended up looking really nice uh, really happy with that abstract looking foreground so now I'm going to begin painting in the trunk of my willow tree and I'm using a little bit of light raw umber to begin with just to, uh, to map out the vague shape And as you can see, I'm using a large round brush for this. This is a size 12 uh, from the Princeton Neptune Synthetic Range. Um, but a flat brush would perhaps serve you equally as well here. Or um, a mop brush perhaps. Uh, any decent uh, watercolour brush that can carry a, a nice amount of water and paint will uh, serve you equally as well uh, for this part. You see now that I'm happy with the uh, the vague outline of this sort of the, the main trunk of this uh, little willow tree, I'm beginning to introduce some darker colours. 
I'm using a combination of raw umber, Payne's grey and sepia for a lovely sort of mixture, sort of a marbled mixture of darks. And I'm just sort of dipping between them, moving between them uh, on my palette and just sort of introducing them in sort of strokes going down the trunk of the tree so we get that lovely almost marbled effect uh, of the bark sort of catching the moonlight. And it looks like we've got a nice little bit of granulation going on there as well, perhaps from the uh, from the sepia, which is always lovely for this sort of thing, just adds that extra little oomph of detail. And now you can see how I've got the whole tree trunk sort of filled in. Uh, with lovely sort of wet, uh, sort of water-rich paint and I'm able to introduce uh, the Payne's Grey which is my darkest colour sort of in and around the trunk and just let, let the darker colour sort of move down and spread out and find their own path. And now I'm just using again the Payne's Grey to just root this uh, this tree trunk into our foreground a little bit, just uh, blending it in with a little bit more Payne's Grey and just uh, putting a little bit of extra paint in that foreground there, darkening it up a little bit, just ready for uh, ready for some more detail later on. So while that's drying, I'm going to put in our lovely uh, willow, willow withies, I think is the correct term for them. Um, if that's not right, somebody please correct me in the, uh, in the video comments. Uh, those lovely sort of long whippy branches that you see coming off these amazing sort of statuesque pollarded willows. Willows that have been uh, sort of trimmed back year by year. So rather than big old thick twisted branches, they end up with uh, one sort of large um, statuesque trunk and these sort of hundreds of thousands of little tiny whippy sort of branches coming off the tops. So that's what I'm going to do here and I'm using uh, my sword liner brush for this. It's my size small pro art uh, synthetic sword liner uh, but of course uh, a rigger brush or just a, a regular liner brush would serve you very well here as well. Basically anything that will come to a fine point uh, and give you those lovely sort of thin natural looking uh, lines. Uh, Colour wise I am uh, just dipping sort of between Again, the uh, Payne's Grey, the Sepia and the Raw Umber on my, um, on my paint palette. I'm using the liner just to add plenty of water and sort of um, mix those three colours up and end up with this sort of really sort of nice dark murky sort of not quite brown, not quite grey, not quite black colour that just is that lovely sort of woody colour uh, that uh, you often get in the moonlight, you get that lovely sort of tint of colour that's not quite one thing or the other. <laughs> and I'm just uh, going around and varying the uh, the colours as well. I'll be moving between them and just doing some branches darker, some branches lighter, just to get uh, some really nice variations in tone as well. And you'll notice that I'm focusing uh, my branches around the top part of the willow tree as well, coming up from these two sort of main knotted areas and just really getting the sense that these all these lovely whippy little branches are sprouting delightfully from the uh, from around the top of this tree 
and I'm just extending them out as uh, as far as it looks <laughs> as far as it looks to me like they need to go. So I'm just sort of bringing them a bit further into the painting to sort of balance out that composition. So we've got this big old heavy tree uh, on the right side, so we just need to draw a little bit more weight down into the left. So I'm just pulling those branches out and making them a little bit longer and a little bit darker. Just see if we can get some to drift across that moon there as well. Now that uh, tree trunk is drying, it's not quite dry yet, but it is uh, it is only a little bit damp. So you can see, just popping in a little bit of extra Payne's grey in a few key areas to give that last little touch of detail in the trunk with little knots and sort of detail that uh, where you get the sort of lovely knobbly bits of bark um, where the um, where the branches are sprouting out. So it's always nice to add that detail in. Well, the paper is only a little bit damp, so um, the paint doesn't spread and flood too madly, uh, but you still get that nice sort of soft edge that you get from adding uh, wet onto uh, wet paper. And as you can see, I'm just uh, doing a coupon, layering up these uh, lovely little whippy willow branches until I'm happy with uh, with how it looks. Again, some lighter paint, some darker paint, uh, varying between the colours so you get a lovely sort of mixture of tone and texture all around this lovely old tree. So now that I'm happy with my branches, I'm just going to continue using the sword liner brush to add some sort of grass detail and effect around the base of the tree, uh, just to further sort of root it into the landscape to sort of settle it in, so to speak. I'm also going to start putting in these lovely long branching uh, twisted willow roots. 
just using some uh, quite light paint and it looks quite dark where I'm putting it on but this paint is actually it's quite um it's quite watered down it looks darker than it is and once it dries it sort of softens down this gives that lovely extra little touch of detail You can see how I'm just pulling these roots all the way across, just sort of blending them softly into the landscape, again just helping to balance out the uh, painting's overall composition. And again, just going over those roots I put in earlier, you can see where the paint was quite light. It hasn't shown up quite as much um, <laughs> as I'd planned. So I'm just going over and doing a few more lines, just adding a little bit more texture into this foreground. Um, in my original plan, I had planned for the foreground to be a little bit darker than this. So you can see me sort of trying to figure out uh, <laughs> exactly uh, what to do with it. To adding in some more roots with my little sword liner brush. Uh, but in the end, I decided to darken it down a little bit more with some extra paint. I think I used some dilute uh, Payne's Grey and I just started uh, brushing over the foreground and just wetting it up and uh, getting some more water onto that paper, re-wetting uh, the darker areas uh, and using a little pinch of regular table salt, just throwing that on where uh, where there's some wet parts of the painting. I'm going to let it do its thing and sort of diffuse and uh, sort of create this lovely little lovely little textural spots in the foreground. And while it's doing that, I'm going to add in a few uh, distant birds, just very carefully with a fine detail brush. This is one of my lovely new uh, miniature brushes from ProArt, part of the Master Stroke Series 60 range. This is uh, the size 5 slash 0, so it's very, very fine. Uh, and I'm using paint Stray to just put in a few uh, really simple uh, small bird silhouettes just drifting up across that left side. And you can see 
or at least you can see when my arm's not in the way, uh, you can see on that bottom sort of right corner section the salt is starting to do its work. Um, off camera I did pop in a little bit extra right in that bottom corner which um, you'll be able to see <laughs> uh, when I do move my arm you can see that the salt is starting to uh, really work beautifully against the watercolour and give that sort of lovely textural uh, sense that perhaps these are, you know, there's some grasses there or perhaps some little white flowers blooming uh, in the moonlight. Uh, it's up to your uh, imagination. So there we are, it's dry and I have brushed the salt off and that is our finished painting. Uh, thank you everybody for watching today, I'd love to know what you think of this one. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing it and I hope you enjoyed watching it uh, as well. Just a couple of uh, really fun little techniques going on uh, in this painting. Uh, but thank you all again for watching, uh, a huge thank you and a shout out to all my wonderful Patreons. Uh, who help support this channel. If you'd like to become one of them, please follow the link below to join my Patreon page or uh, check out my Etsy store for uh, some uh, original artwork. Uh, but that's all from me today. Thank you very much everybody for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again soon in the next video.